Welcome to the President and CEO Focus on the Middle Market podcast series, where President and CEO founder Paul Stuckel discusses middle market issues with business leaders from across the nation. Today, in part two of a three-part series, Paul speaks with Thomas A. Stewart, Executive Director of the National Center for the Middle Market at Ohio State Fisher College of Business, about the center's objectives and the challenges facing middle market executives in today's environment. There's very little media in the kinds of places where you get not just sort of business adventure stories, but also useful insights for leaders like the Economist, Harvard Business Review, Fortune, and so on and so forth. You don't get very much about them because these faces don't sell magazines. And, you know, you can put, when I was at Fortune, putting Steve Jobs or Bill Gates on the cover was the surest way to increase newsstand sales, right? You yeah, don't yeah. get that from putting the CEO of Elmer's Glue or Tootsie Roll or or any of the other Eaton Furniture or any of the other sort of middle market champions. They don't they don't sell books, right? And so there's there's a lot less media attention. The classic stories are the ones you see in Inc. magazine, which are often great, but they're sort of, I maxed out my credit cards. I was halfway through my wife's credit cards, starting on my mother-in-law's <coughs> credit cards, and suddenly the tide turned. You know, that's the, those success stories, which are exciting, but they're a little, they're not what I'm talking about. That's why yeah, we ahead. were founded, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly, we had, exactly. We had the exact same insight. I completely yeah. agree with you. Yeah. And, but you also recognize that there's another interesting problem, which is that some of the stuff that's written about big companies can be picked up by smaller companies mm. if you just lop off a couple of zeros. But some of the right. stuff can't be. It can't be translated. It's got to be written in the native language of mid-sized companies. And so, for instance, innovation. There's a lot of really good writing about innovation that talks about Monte Carlo analysis and portfolios and stage gate processes and how you manage a portfolio of innovation, some of which is high risk, some of which is lower risk and more incremental stuff, and how you work these things out across the portfolio. Well, that's all well and good if you're a giant pharmaceutical company with 100 projects going on or, or a large manufacturer. But if you are a one or two or three product shop selling $50 million worth of X, Y, and Z, you have fewer baskets and fewer eggs. So your thinking about innovation is going to be different. You're going to look at risks differently. You're going to manage risks differently. And, and, and so you need to think about innovation not from a how do I translate what works for General Electric, our wonderful partner and sponsor? And this, how, you know, what works for General Electric is not necessarily going to work for a middle-sized company. And so you, know, you sort of have to think what is going to work. And you know, that goes to everything from executive development, operational systems, uh, knowledge management. You can go across all kinds of, of disciplines and say you know, there's, there's a difference of degree sometimes, and sometimes there's a difference in kind. No, that's exactly right, and and that's that that's something that I, most people don't actually appreciate because the I mean, the the way we put it, you know, the way I because I've been making the same pitch basically for for three years now. The the bottom line is the, the larger companies have their own sort of culture as well. It's not it's not even yeah. just it's not even just the mechanics of management or the or or looking at innovation or those things. Although that's absolutely true, um, there's actually just a different culture between you mean a the large companies. Culture? You mean a co- yeah, all the, big companies are alike. No, no, but they, but they way. have they have similar yeah they have some similar attributes. But then, again, I'm talking kind of the C-suite here, right? I yeah. mean, compa- large 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 companies have certain types of executives, and very small companies, you know, sort of the the ink crowd, you know. I mean, the way I used to describe because I used to be one of them, you know, a Gucci, you know, I'm wearing Gucci's with no uh, with no socks, right? That <laughs> that's that, you know, I'm cool, right? Um, the middle market guys, I call them Main Street. You know, the, to me, it's, sure. it's Wall Street versus Main Street versus Silicon Valley. I mean, if you really want to make huge sort of generalizations, but but honestly, it's a Main Street kind of, of culture. And and right. it's, roll, it's roll up your sleeves. I don't have a massive staff of people to you know your fifty million dollar yep. manufacturer. I don't have a staff of of twelve twenty that can look at my supply chain issues. It's, I've probably got a guy who's my manager of, of logistics who can who needs to or managing purchasing. Who, can, who needs to sort that out, right? So it's a, and it's, so it's a very, very different, it's, and they have very different time pressures. And my, you know, the, the reason I started this this thing up was, uh, and, and sort of a mantra of ours is, for these folks, and it includes all aspects of everything, including their personal wealth, because as you say, most of them are private, it's, it's trying to get to them uh, to understand what they don't know. In other words, 
that that is the beginning of wisdom, knowing what you don't know. And, and, and if, so we don't necessarily give them answers, but we do try to provoke thought. You know, you should be worried about X. You know, you should be worried yep. about risk management because you don't have somebody full time looking at your risk management. But you know what? It could come up and bite you. But those kind of things. Yeah, there are um, a bunch of issues. Oh, I completely like appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. 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 There are a bunch of yeah. issues. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting is if you think about a, you know a large company that has a chief strategy officer or a strategy team, right? And they got a bunch of guys who used to work at consulting firms who can go out and size a market and say, you know, how big is the market for widgets in Albania? And, you know, they'll come back with a few PowerPoint slides that will tell you that stuff. You know, these – one of the things that I think is interesting about middle market companies is they tend to be very close to their customers. They know them. They know them by name. They know them very well. Very close to their operations. We have, we've we just got some really interesting data on comparing mid-sized companies and larger companies in terms of their operational systems and their operational effectiveness. And one of the things that we see is that the mid-sized company's big strength is sleeves rolled up, elbows deep in you know, motor oil and grease executives who are right there and, you know, lots of leadership attention and problems aren't covered up because <laughs> there's no layer of bureaucracy to cover them with and all of that. Right. So that's right. on the positive side of the ledger. And on the negative side of the ledger is they are more likely to come up with ad hoc, informal, this solution will solve this problem and are less likely programmatically to say, this is what lean looks like. This is what Toyota production system looks like. Now, maybe that's good. You know, maybe they are fitting exactly horses for courses, but there's also a little more, I'm going to do it. I'm going to solve the problem. I'm going to get in there and work it and solve the problem as root cause. They'll do that too, but they're not sort of, it's not programmatic. Likewise, in some cases, growth strategy tends to be more opportunistic than strategic. Listen tomorrow for part three of our discussion with Thomas. Thanks for listening.